get that drink. Thank you guys so much for coming back to the Queen Jinx channel today. I uh, definitely appreciate everybody tuning in today. Um, so the reasoning behind today's video is pretty self-explanatory, but I wanted to give a little bit more detail about it. You know, uh, we as Americans or North Americans, even if you're Canadian, um, you know, we don't really grow up with soccer. Uh, you know, soccer is something that our parents probably made us do when we were kids, and you probably don't hear anything about it after that. You know, after that, it's basically American football, basketball, baseball, so on, so on. So, um, you know, today, I've been asking a lot of my friends that aren't as in, that aren't really as into soccer as I am. You know, why they don't watch soccer other than the World Cup, and the World Cup's coming up, which is another reason why I'm doing this video. So. Everybody seemingly had the same answer. You know, it was A, you know, we don't fully understand the rule. Or B, we don't really have a team that we know of to root for. So the purpose behind today's video is to give um, an Americans a, a team to root for. Because when you have a team, you fall in love with the players, you fall in love with the game, and you slowly learn the rules. Uh, kind of like myself in hockey. I didn't know anything about hockey until I found my team. And I found my team because Las Vegas got the Golden Knights. And the more I watched it, the more I learned about the rules. And the more I, you know, loved some players and didn't love some players as much. <laughs> so once you have a team, I feel like everything else just kind of grows naturally. So I'm going to give you, uh, the league I've chosen is the Premier League. And the reason I chose the Premier League is because it's the most watched league. It's the most popular league. It's the best league to watch. And it's widely available for every American to watch on Peacock. And you're going to see it on TV all the time on Saturday mornings. You know, it's the league, other than our domestic league, and Major League Soccer, which is not what I recommend starting with. You know, this is going to give you your team to start with to get into the sport. Now, there are far more NFL teams than English Premier League teams. So I'm not going to hit every single NFL team. But if I did not hit your team, uh, leave a comment below with your team, and I'll give you a good, uh, a good example on who to follow. So... I'm going to give it to the, the NFL team I'm going to compare to the Premier League team is going to be based off how it's ran. So, for example, you may be a lifelong Tampa Bay fan, but you may absolutely hate the fact that essentially, you know, your last Super Bowl was with players that have not been there that long. You may want a team that's the exact opposite. Well, this video is going to give you the opportunity to follow a team that, that, that relies on home growing their players and building it up. So, you're going to see the struggles all the way to the promised land. Um, you know, Tampa, you know, they brought in all their players, they bought their players, and they won. It may be the exact opposite. Your NFL team may suck, and you want a team that's going to win right away. This is going to give you This is going to give you the opportunity to find that team. So I'm not going to waste too much time, and I'm going to get right into it. The first club, I'm, I'm just going to go in ABC order. So the first club we're going to go with is Arsenal. Arsenal is a London-based team. Uh, they have great fans. They're a really, really big club. However... Over the past few years, they've just been on a dramatic downslope. Um, the NFL team I'm going to compare them to is the Houston Texans. And that's because Arsenal, is net, they've sometimes not treated their star player or their better players uh, fairly. They've let some players go that probably they shouldn't have. And frankly, they've still got talent, just like the Houston Texans. But do they have a real plan? I don't know. So that's why I'm comparing them to the Houston Texans. Um, so next we've got Aston Villa. Aston Villa is by all means, I wouldn't consider them a huge club, but they're definitely not a small club. Uh, they've got great fans. Um, they're consistently consistent. <laughs> That's the best way to put it. Now they did have a down year a few years back, uh, but I'm comparing them to the Indianapolis Colts. And just like the Colts, you know, they had a down year, uh, a few years back as well. Um, they're also just lost their star player recently, and they're picking up pieces to try to build around. Just like you know, the Colts lost Andrew Luck, and even before that, Peyton Manning, and they've, you know, managed to build themselves back up. And I think that's what Aston Villa is currently doing. I think it's a good time to be a Villa fan uh, because I do think the future is bright. But I don't think they're going to win right away, just like the Colts. I think they're good enough to contend, but not necessarily go to the promised land just yet. So next we have Brentford. Uh, Brentford is a, another London-based club. They're kind of new to the Premier League. They just got promoted to the Premier League this past year. And they are kind of building from within right now. They've kept their players, uh, their squad intact, really. They haven't 
really made a lot of uh, transfers in the transfer market or, you know, if the NFL or talking about NFL, they haven't really made a lot of free agent signings. They've kind of went with the club they had and built from the ground up. This one was a hard one, but I think I'm going to compare them to Jacksonville because Jacksonville is kind of a new on the scene as well. They've got, you know, some, they've got some names now, finally. Uh, they've got a coach now, finally, similar to Brentford. Uh, there's going to be growing pains, yes. You're not going to be good right away, but... If you're looking for a team that you're going to build from, the, that you're going to kind of see the struggles and then go up, I think Brentford is the team you're going to go with and the team you're going to like. So next we're going to move on to Brighton and Old Albion. Now, they are a team that, uh, they have a really nice stadium, uh, unlike the team that I'm comparing them to. Uh, but they're, they're never quite bad enough to be in the worst teams in the league, but they're never quite good enough to be in the best teams in the league. They're kind of stagnant. And I compare them to a team like the Miami Dolphins. You know, the Dolphins are always there, except for that one or two years they just had terrible years. Um, but other than that, they're just they're always kind of there. They're never the worst team, but they're never the they're, they're never fighting for a top spot either. So, if you're wanting a mystery of never knowing if you're going to be good or bad, I think Brighton might be the team for you. So next, we're going to go into Burnley, and Burnley is a team that. A lot like Brighton, they're never good, but they're never bad either. You know, they can make some, they can make some runs, but they can also make some bad runs. <laughs> and um, they have a coach that a lot of people like. You know, he's managed to keep them in the Premier League despite having, I don't know if they have the smallest budget, but I know their budget's not very big. Uh, I compare them to a team like the Washington football team. You know, they have some diehard fans. They're going through some changes, and uh, they're not quite there yet. Don't know if they're making the right decisions, but you know, if you want to, if you want a fun ride, uh, Burnley might be the place to go. So next, we're going to go to a team called Chelsea, and a lot of Americans have probably heard of Chelsea because our best player in the U.S. men's national team is Christian Pulisic, who also plays for Chelsea. Uh, Chelsea is known for kind of being, a, you know, uppity, kind of a posh type of squad, uh, and I'm going to compare them to a team called the New England Patriots, which I'm sure everybody either loves or they hate kind of like Chelsea. You either love them or hate them. A lot of people don't like Chelsea fans. A lot of people don't like Patriots fans. So, but the thing is with Chelsea, you can't deny their success. They've won the Premier uh, League title if you, well, since I've been watching, uh, in my lifetime, they've won some titles. Uh, I know Patriots obviously have won some titles. So, uh, this year they've got a shot at it. Um, you know, the Patriots, I know they're going through changes with their quarterback and they had a down year last year, but I, Chelsea may have been the hardest team to compare, but I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna go with the Patriots for a, for a comparison. So now we're gonna go on to the Crystal Palace, and Crystal Palace is also another London-based team. Um, not necessarily the posh that Chelsea brings; uh, they're the South London squad. Uh, Crystal Palace is always overshadowed by the other um, by the other teams in London. However, you know they're never going to be the London squad and a team that's never going to be the squad is the Chargers. They're always going to be overshadowed by the Rams. Um, you know, just like the Rams, I mean, I'm sorry, just like the Chargers, they've got some great young players. I think they're going to be very good in the years coming up. Maybe not this year, but they've got some great pieces to build around just like Justin Herbert and so on and so on with the Chargers. So if you're looking for a team that's not, that's going to be decent this year, but three or four years from now could be very, very good. I think Crystal Palace is a bandwagon to jump on right now. So now we've got Everton. And Everton's a historic club that a lot of Americans have played for, including Landon Donovan and Tim Howard. Um, so, but the thing is, Everton plays in Liverpool. Everton is always overshadowed by Liverpool. And I compare that to a team like the Buffalo Bills. Despite Buffalo Bills being the only professional team in New York, they're always overshadowed by the Giants and Jets, no matter how good the Bills are. And I think that's a lot like Everton. It doesn't, doesn't matter how good Everton is. And Everton is very, uh, they've been strong uh, lately. Uh, you know, this year they've been iffy, but the talent's there. And I think they're always a tough out, just like the Bills. I believe the Bills may be a little bit better in terms of their respective leagues, but uh, you know, the Bills, it doesn't. Se it seems like no matter how good they are, they don't get the respect that they deserve, kind of like Everton. So if you want a team like that, that uh, just 
goes a little bit under the radar, I, I suggest a team like Everton. So moving on to Leeds. Um, Leeds is a heavily followed squad that a lot of people not, do not necessarily like their fans. Um, Leeds is an historic club. They've had success in the past. They haven't really found success lately. Uh, they've got a lot of personalities on their team, and I compare them to a team like the Philadelphia Eagles. The Eagles are always consistently one of the most disliked teams, just like Leeds. Um, maybe talk a little bit more than they actually are good. <laughs> Don't hate me for saying that, but Leeds is, is, is an interesting team, and I think the Eagles are too, and I think they're very, they're similar in a lot of ways. So now we're going to go on to Leicester City. And Leicester City won the Premier League title a few years back, maybe 2000, I think it was 2016 it was. And um, they won, the odds of them winning I, was one of the most craziest stories ever. If you, don't know, if you don't know about the Leicester City, the year that they won, the odds of them winning, uh, I suggest going to Google. I don't know the numbers off the top of my head. But I compare them to a team like the Titans. You know, the Titans have a couple of star players, just like Leicester City. You know, Leicester City's got a guy named Jamie Vardy who's consistently just banging out goals. Uh, kind of like Derrick Henry. Um, and, um, but no matter what, how good they do, even if they, they're very good, just I compare them to a team like the Tennessee Titans. You know, the Titans are very good. And they were a couple of plays uh, the past few years from going on to, like, I mean, maybe even Super Bowl-type teams. And Leicester City is kind of the same way. They're always right there, one of the top teams, but they're the team that gets the least amount of, of coverage, I guess you could, call, you could say, for lack of a better term, just like the Titans. So if you want a team that is very, very good, better than Everton, like I mentioned earlier, if you want a team that's very, very good, but still somehow goes under the radar and doesn't get respect, Leicester City is your squad. So now we're going to go into Liverpool, the other, the other Liverpool team, uh, like Everton, um, Liverpool is a very well-ran squad with a coach who clearly knows what they're doing. However, they are getting a little bit older. And I compare them to a team like the Pittsburgh Steelers. Very well-ran club, very good coach. Um, if I'm not mistaken, their owner, don't quote me on this, if I'm not mistaken, their owner is the guy who owns the Boston Red Sox, if that gives you an idea. So they're, well, they're, they're just a very well-ran club, top to bottom, but they're going to be facing some decisions uh, very soon about some of their aging players, uh, very similar to what Pittsburgh Steelers are going through right now. So they're competitive right now. Uh, however, it's going to be interesting to see how they handle things going in the future. So next up, we've got Manchester City. And despite the fact that the Tampa Bay owners actually own Manchester United, uh, I'm comparing Man City to Tampa. And that's just quite... Plain and simple, a team that is going to win right now and a team that has no shame in buying their players. People are either going to love or they're going to hate that, uh, but there's nothing wrong with wanting to you know, get into soccer and go for a team who's going to win. And Man City is your club if you want a team that is going to win. So then we're going to go into Man United. Now, Man United has a very good squad this year, and they actually recently brought in Cristiano Ronaldo. So they've got name power. But they haven't had a lot of success over the years, despite the fact that when I was a kid, they were the team. You know, that was back when they had Wayne Rooney, David Beckham, uh, so on and so on. Um, I compared them to a team like the Dallas Cowboys, uh, a team that has fans that are always going to bring up past success, a team that always is going to be good, but just never quite seems to get there, despite the fact that they have a really good squad. Uh, so definitely Cowboys, Man United, I think is a very fair, good comparison. So now we have Newcastle. Newcastle is an interesting squad. Um, I don't think they're that good. Um, Newcastle just, they're just kind of there. You know, they, they never seem to necessarily be the worst team, but they're always in danger of getting... Uh, relegated, which I know as an American you may not know what that is quite yet. Don't worry about that just yet. Uh, you need to get into soccer before you start worrying about what these other things mean. But with Newcastle, I compare it to a team like the Bengals, uh, a team that has decent players, uh, some decent building blocks, but a team that's just not quite good enough right now. So 
it's 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 a chance if you're gonna if you're gonna try to root for Newcastle, but just be prepared for some uh, growing pains. So now we're gonna go on to Norwich City. Norwich City is arguably probably the worst team in the Premier League this year, but they have die-hard fans, some very very passionate, great fans. So if you're gonna want to if you're gonna root for a team that does not that you'll never be called a bandwagon fan. Norwich City is the team to root for. And they have an American right now called Josh Sargent, who you may or may not know of. Um, I compare them to a team like the New York Jets, a team that has good young players, but um, they may very well be the worst team in the league this year. <laughs> so, you know, Josh Sargent, just like um, the quarterback from BYU, I can't think of his name, uh, Zach Wilson, I believe is his name. Um, so Norwich City is going to be a team for you if you want it. If you want to take a chance on root for a team like that this year. So now we've got a couple teams left. We're going to go with Southampton. Southampton is a team that recently got rid of arguably their best player and did not necessarily do a good job replacing them. So they make questionable roster decisions, and I compare that to a team like the Raiders. You know, they're always kind of just there. They're not good enough to be a top team, but they're not bad enough to be a bad team either. Um, and the decisions they make are kind of sometimes they're head scratchers. So I definitely can think a team like the Raiders is going to be, uh, even with the questionable future. So if you want to go for a team like that, Southampton's probably your squad. So now we're going to go to Tottenham. Tottenham is another uh, London team. They're a big team. A lot of people know them. They have a star player in Harry Kane, uh, just like uh, you know Russell Wilson. They've got a good supporting cast, just like Seattle does. Uh, Seattle is always winning, just like Tottenham, but they don't really win the. They don't really come in first ever, just like Seattle. Uh, although if they had ran the ball, who knows what would have happened that year. But um, nonetheless, if you want a team that's good, uh, Tottenham, Seattle Seahawks is a fair comparison. So we've got three teams left. Uh, next, I'm going to go with Watford. I don't have much to say about Watford other than they've got decent players, but uh, who knows what the future holds. Uh, it's very questionable, and I compare them to a team like the Giants. You know, they could be good in a few years, but then again, they could be a, right back at the bottom. Um, so next we've got West Ham, which is another London-based club, and West Ham relies so far on their offense. And uh, they are vulnerable in defense. They've got a high-powered offense right now. Can they keep it up? I don't know, but nonetheless, they are a... Uh, a nice, you know, sexy club to root for. I compare them to a team like the New Orleans Saints. Uh, and last, we've got the Wolves, uh, Wolverhampton. Um, Wolverhampton is a squad that has had moments. Uh, you know, a few years back, they, they finished pretty high in the league. They seem to have took a dip this year. I compare them to a team like uh, the Atlanta Falcons or the Minnesota Vikings. You know, a team that, um, you know, that they've, re they've had success in the past, but I just don't know. I think they're kind of on their last legs and they need to make changes, just like the Vikings and, and the Falcons do. So there is my comparisons. Um, you know, I hope I, if I can just get, you know, maybe even one or two people watching uh, soccer and maybe found, found your team, I hope I, I hope I did something. Uh, if I did not mention your NFL team, like I mentioned earlier, drop it below and I'll give you a fair comparison of who you should root for. Or if you want an exact opposite of what, <laughs> of what team you like, I can also do that as well. Please, please, please subscribe to the channel. Um, we've got a lot of good videos coming up soon. Uh, comment on what you thought. Please like the video. It helps it get up more out there. And I'm hoping to, uh, hoping to, and hoping to bring more of these videos out there. Um, and I know Adam, who's my, uh, my co-host here on most of my videos. I know he appreciates it as well. So I don't want this video to be over 20 minutes. So thank you guys so much for uh, checking out the video. Hopefully I helped somebody. Um, if not, stay with it. And I promise you're going to like soccer once you get into it. Have a good week, guys.